students welcome back to my channel i am dr n usha rani i am speaking from m pharmacy analysis laboratories of maharaja's college of pharmacy vijayanagar in my previous video i have described how uh, the hplc separations take place what are the different parts of a hplc system and the, the different working of uh, all the parts of the hplc system uh, in this particular video today i am going to describe how to inject a sample and how to analyze the drug sample by using the open lab software that is being installed on based on which the hplc system works as i told you in the previous video our hplc system is agile 1220 nc infinity series hplc system so dear students today i will be showing you how to analyze a sample by using the software and our hplc system so for this first of all i need to open the software that is the open lab software so this is the primary outlook of the software dear students with different modules then i need to on the hplc system so i have on it you can see the green light that has appeared so now i will be clicking on the launch so when i click on the launch all the previous analysis graphs whatever were being done previously will be appearing i'll be just closing them then first of all i want to tell you the different modules that are present in the outlook that is file edit view method data result analysis control reports window and help these are the different modules that are available in this software by which we can purge the system then wash the column and then analyze the sample so firstly we need to purge the system what is meant by purging of hplc system so here you can see in the system the mobile phys reservoirs in which we have taken ester nitrile as one of the solvent and hplc grade water as the other solvent you can see the two tubes that are coming out of the reservoirs then going into the degasser as i told you yesterday where the unnecessary gas bubbles will be removed and then passed into the pump and from the pump it will be delivered into the column so this is the flow chart for the flow of the mobile phase but we need to purge the system before we start the uh, analysis purging means we have to flush the lines all the lines with solvent such that uh, Uh, they are all clear of any previous solvents that are left out uh, for the previous analysis experiments so purging means flushing all the pipelines with solvent such that they are all free of the previous solvents and washes whatever is done in the previous analysis and experiments so that is the purpose and significance of purging so how to purge the system before starting the purging process let us see the instrument status for this we need to click on control button and then on instrument status then uh, different parameters regarding the instrument status will appear here that is regarding the pump in including the mobile phase ratios then uh, detector parameters that is vwd detector that is variable wavelength detector the lamp etc all these parameters need to be set before we need we, we start the purging process for that we need to go into file and then click on new then uh, click on blank method you need not save it as it is not for the sample so click on no and then this type of uh, window appears where you can set the flow rate solvents etc for the purging process the flow rate i am setting it as 1 ml per minute 
Chlorate can be set at 1 ml per minute for 5 minutes and then increase it to 2 ml per minute for another 5 minutes and 3 ml and so on up to 5 ml per minute or you can directly purge with 5 ml per minute as a fluorate. Any of the processes we can use. Then I am setting the solvent ratios. Solvent A is ester nitrile and solvent B is HPLC grade water. I am setting it at 50 is to 50 volume by volume ratio. So setting B also at 50 is to 50. So I have set the flow rate, then I have set the solvent ratio. Now I will be clicking on the control button and download all these parameters that I have set now. Again we got this window showing the parameters. Now I need to on the system here. So I am clicking on on button. It takes around 1 minute for these parameters to appear as we have set them. So, dear students, look here. The mobile phase ratio, we have set it as 50 is to 50. So, it is appearing as 50 is to 50. We have set the flow rate as 1 ml per minute. This also appeared as 1 ml per minute and this is the pressure which automatically develops and now we need to open the purge valve. So opening the purge valve is turning it to an anti-clockwise and closing it is turning to a clockwise direction. So I have opened the purge valve. So immediately you can see here as we have opened the purge valve the pressure has decreased. If we close it, it develops pressure. As we have opened it, the pressure has decreased. So like this, I can purge the lines, all the pipelines for around 5 minutes. And after 5 minutes, I can change it, change the flow rate for 2 ml per minute. So after 5 minutes, now I want to uh, change the flow rate to uh, 2 ml per minute. So I have right clicked here, clicking on method. So again I got this uh, uh, parameters displayed. So just now I am only changing the flow rate from 1 ml per minute to 2 ml per minute. Then clicking on OK. So dear students, you can now see here, the flow rate has changed to 2 ml per minute. Now we are purging all the pipelines with a flow rate of 2 ml per minute. This will be done for another 5 minutes. So I have done the purging with a flow rate of 2 ml per minute also for another 5 minutes. Now I want to uh, stop purging and go to washing of the column. The next step is washing of the column. For this I need to close this window, this method and then click on file, then go to new and go to blank method. You need not save this also as we are proceeding for washing of the column. So click on no, then maximize it. So set the parameters now, like uh, the flow rate, I will be giving it as 1 ml per minute and now for washing of the column, the mobile phase ratios have to be set, how we set for the sample analysis. So now I am setting it as 70 is to 30. Seventy is to thirty volume by volume ratio of ester nitrile and HPLC grade water. Then I need to download the method. So click on control. Then click on download method. 
so if i minimize it i got the parameters now see i have set it as 70 is to 30 is the mobile phase ratio then uh, the flow rate i have set it as 1 ml per minute so dear students now i will be closing the punch wall so closing the punch wall is turning it to clockwise direction i have closed the punch wall so look here as i have closed the punch wall the pressure goes on increasing the pressure goes on increasing and now washing is as i have closed the punch wall now the solvents will be flushing into the column and the column will be washed if at all any impurities or the previous analysis materials are present in the column they all get washed out so this is how washing of the column is done so i have washed the column for about uh, half an hour now i want to analyze the sample for this i need to again download the method i will be clicking on file and then new blank method so click on no and then maximize all the parameters have appeared now i am fixing the flow rate at uh, 1 ml per minute then uh, now the mobile phase ratio is as i told you 70 is to 30 isto nitrile is to hplc grade water so 70 is okay sorry 30 so you can see 70 is to 30 Volume by volume ratio of the mobile phases. <coughs> Then I have clicked on the detector parameters, where I am uh, setting the detector wavelength as two thirty nanometers. 230 nanometers is the lambda max of the hydrochlorothiazide drug that I am going to run today as a sample. Then uh, this is the wavelength. Then one more parameter I have to give it in the pump. That is the run time or the stop time. I am setting it as five minutes. so dear students i have set two parameters pump parameters and detector parameters in the pump parameters i have set the flow rate as 1 ml per minute mobile phase ratio as 70 in 70 is to 30 and stop time as 5 minutes and in the detector parameters i have set the lambda max value of hydrochlorothiazide that is 230 nanometers then i have to download these parameters so i will be clicking on control and then uh, download method so here all the parameters that i have set are appearing here mobile phase ratio as 70 is to 30 and flow rate as 1 and uh, Uh, our detector wavelength as 230 nanometers so the parameters are set so now i have to uh, go for running of the sample for that again i need to click on control then click on single run so here now i need to save the method because i am running the sample so i am clicking on yes so now here i have to give the details of the sample that i am running hydrochlorothiazide sample i am running so i will be marking it as hc tz so i'm running the first sample giving it as 1 then here we can view the descriptions also 
like for example uh, wavelength wavelength i have set it as uh, 230 nanometers then uh, i can give uh, mobile phase ratio uh, mb ratio as 70 is to 30 then uh, i can give even uh, the mobile phase names like uh, estonitrile acn comma hplc grade water i can even give the concentration 50 mg per ml so like this i can uh, uh, give all the information all the parameters that i have set for this uh, sample so that even after one month or two months if we are giving uh, the data we can have the full information of that sample I'm just copying the name, then going to save. So this type of a window appears where I need to give the sample ID. So here I need to give the same name what I have given previously in the data file also the same name what I have given previously. Then also at the result name. So by doing like this, we can get our graph chromatogram. document easily so after giving all this data now i need to click on the start button so after i have clicked on the start button you can see here you can see the status pre sequence phase has completed then initializing the devices then uh, waiting for trigger so when waiting for trigger appears we need to inject the sample so the students look at the injector position it is in the load position where i am loading the sample be putting it in the i will be turning the trigger to the inject mode after i turn the trigger to the inject mode i will be checking for balance when i check for balance if this yellow color appears it means that the graph starts from zero you can see initially it has started from minus 250 now it is starting from zero so the balancing will make it start from zero the graph starts from zero so the sample is now along with the mobile phase passing through the column and separation of hydrochlorothiazide takes place at a certain retention time so just watch the graph We are getting a straight baseline. So, if we push the system and wash the column, we will be getting a stable baseline, a stable straight baseline.
so dear students look at the chromatogram we have got the hydrochlorothiazide peak uh, with retention time between 1.25 and 1.50 minutes the other small peak uh, is not related to hydrochlorothiazide it is maybe because of a small impurity that may be present in the drug and uh, the baseline is continuing nearing to 5 minutes we have already set the stop time as 5 minutes so the chromatogram stops automatically uh, when it reaches 5 minutes time and the blue color that is appearing in the instrument parameters window after 5 minutes after the complete separation it turns to green when it turns to green it means that the separation process has completed so the better we purge and wash the column and the pipelines the better baseline we will be getting so the chromatogram is nearing to 5 minutes so see the green color has appeared so the separation process has completed now i will be turning the trigger back from inject mode to load position so this is the final chromatogram that we got for 50 microgram per ml of hydrochlorothiazide to your students now if i want to analyze this graph for qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis i will be clicking on reports and then view in view i will be going for area percentage so if i maximize the window i can see the peak for hydrochlorothiazide the retention time i have uh, the drug has shown the retention time as 1.383 minutes and uh, you can see the peak here at 1.383 minutes this is the peak area of or area under the curve so as i have told you in the previous video by the retention time we can identify the compound it is useful for qualitative analysis because retention time is specific for a particular drug and with the other parameters like this peak area and peak height we can peak area as well as peak height we can do quantitative analysis also that is we can estimate how much of hydrochlorothiazide is present in our sample so the other other readings or measurements that we got is for for the small trace peaks that we got because of the presence of very trace amounts of impurities but the main peak of our concern is the uh, narrow big peak or a, a good resolution peak that is 1.383 retention time of hydrochlorothiazide so dear students this is how we have we will be uh, injecting the sample and then uh, running the chromatogram and then finally analyzing the chromatogram with these parameters of peak areas area percentages heights and height percentages so uh, I, i have told you that the peak area for hydrochlorothiazide i have obtained it as here 1475622 is the peak area that i got for hydrochlorothiazide so to uh, calculate the amount of the drug that is present in the given sample for this we need to adopt a method the methods may be like calibration curve method or a standard addition method or an internal standard methods any of these methods can be used to calculate the percentage of the hydrochlorothiazide that is present in the given sample today i am showing you the calibration curve method so for calibration curve method what we have to do is we have to run a series of samples today i have shown you running 50 microgram per ml sample i can run 10 microgram per ml 20 microgram per ml 30 microgram per ml 40 50 60 and so on so to do the calibration curve method i have to run a series of samples and note all the peak areas so here already i have run previously i am showing you the peak areas of different concentrations 10 microgram per ml this is the peak area 20 microgram per ml 30 40 50 60 and so on so for this data i will be drawing a curve if i if i draw a linear curve this is the type of curve i will be getting 
So all of you know this one. We have to just select this one, go to insert. Then we get uh, to show once. So we click insert. We will be getting uh, scatter. And when we go into scatter and then uh, click on this one, we get uh, this type of a graph. And then when we click on add trend line, then uh, so display equation, then R square value, then close. You get the graph. This is the regression equation. This is the calibration curve, which shows that as you have increased the concentrations of your sample, the peak areas also correspondingly increased. So this is the linear curve that you got, satisfying the equation of y equal to mx plus c. This is the equation y equal to mx plus c. Then the R square value that we got is 0 0.989. The ideal value is, it should be close to 1. So most probably for method developments, we have to get 0 0.999. Today we have got it as 0 0.989. It's only a demo purpose. So uh, this is the first step that we do. Preparing a series of concentrations, taking their peak areas, constructing a calibration curve, then running an unknown sample, unknown sample. For that unknown sample, for example, I have got the peak area of this value. Then what I have to do is that unknown sample peak area, I have to substitute at this y place. I have, so I have to substitute in this y place. If I substitute in the place of y and solve this equation, I will get the value of x. The value of x is nothing but the amount of sample that is present in the tablet solution. So that is how I will be calculating the amount of drug present in the tablet solution. Unknown sample peak area, substitute in the y place of the regression equation. Then you solve it for x, you get the x value. It is nothing but the concentration of the drug that is present in the tablet solution from where you can calculate the percentage purity. So this is the procedure for calibration curve method. You can also follow the other methods like standard addition and uh, uh, internal standard methods. Today I have shown you a simple method of calibration curve method. So dear students, I hope you have understood how to inject a sample how to run the chromatogram, how to set the parameters, how to analyze the obtained chromatogram, how to calculate the amount of the drug that is present in the unknown sample. Hope this video is useful to you. If you have any doubts, you can post it in the comments section. And in my next video, I will be coming up with the working principles of IR spectrophotometer. If, it, if you find this video good, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.